to make glycerine and panacotta, two, uh, two products. We we'll start with glycerine. Glycerine is a typical Italian uh, breadstick that we make. For that, we require 200 grams of refined flour, 15 grams of milk powder. Milk powder is hydroscopic in nature, so it will absorb the moisture and will make the glycerine nice and uh, crisp. This is 10 grams of sugar. Very little uh, yeast, so this 5 grams of yeast. Again, 8 grams of salt. For flavoring, we are using oregano. You can use chili flakes or you can use your uh, parmesan cheese, whichever you want. And very little fat. Today we are going to use dalda, which is 2 grams. So you can use butter or oil for it. Okay, so now we are going to make this meal. For that, we are supposed to sieve our refined flour along with our milk powder together. So what I am going to do is, I am going to mix the milk powder and refined flour together. And then I am going to sieve it right over here so that you can see. I can obviously use a sieve, I am using a small sieve. If we don't do this, what will happen is, if I keep the milk powder just like that on the flour and I put water, the milk powder will immediately absorb the water and will form lumps. If we don't want that is why we sieve it properly in the flour. After that, we are going to put our flavoring, which is your oregano. If it is oregano, you can put it. If you are putting adjoin or something, put it in the end because you will not be able to knead it properly. Take a while. Put the sugar. Yeast. And we start. The water is approximate. We need to make a nice stiff flow. So add little water at a time and start. Now the glycine, the shape of the glycine does not have to be extremely straight. It has to be a little wobbly. It has to be, it should look rustic. Uh, it originated in Turin in Italy. And uh, nowadays it is used uh, as an appetizer or even as a table setup. They put it on the tables in the center of the tables. They can also use it as a bread display. So beyond uh, behind the breads that you see put up on the buffet, you can see nice long glycine sticks with different shapes put up. So it can be used for that as well. Keep on adding little water at a time and keep on binding it. The milk powder also gives a good snack to the glycine. You can bake it and it's nice and crunchy. So we add milk powder to it. Do not add milk, do not substitute it with milk, milk will make it soft, so add milk powder to it. You can add nice parmesan cheese in it or you can also roll it in cheese. That is also possible, if parmesan is preferable. See, my dough is nicely kneaded. I will see if I need more water, I can add it even in the air. Alright. I'll start kneading my dough and then I'll check for water. Knead your dough very well. It is a stiff dough, so some of you don't end up kneading it only. Knead it extremely well. As you can see, the dough has been kneaded now. I'll start with my pack and salt and incorporate it in. Little, very little fat is taken so that we can incorporate salt into it. That is the reason we are taking such little fat. Otherwise, fat is not actually required. Mix it up here. As you can see, it's a, so, it's a hard dough. The dough is needed. When we round it up, it will not be a smooth texture. It will not be a very smooth texture. Alright? Okay, so we are rounding it up. 
push everything inside. You can see it's not a smooth texture. Alright, we'll keep it on a so clean surface and cover it with a damp cake. So our grizzly dough has gone for grooming. We'll start with panna cotta. Now panna cotta is an Italian dessert. The ingredients for the panna cotta are we are taking 150 grams of milk, 150 grams of fresh cream, 60 grams of granulated sugar. We have some gelatin which is 10 grams granulated gelatin, lemon zest a little and over here we have some chopped strawberries and sugar. We will make a compote of this and we are going to use it as uh, a garnish or putting a layer on top of the pan. Alright, so first we'll start with soaking the gelatin. As you saw, this is 10 grams of uh, granulated gelatin. To this, we are adding 4 to 5 times of tap water or room temperature water. So, this is 15, 30, and this will be 40. Adding immediately stir the gelatin. If you think you more water is to be added, please add more water.
mix this well. <coughs> Strain it. the mixture strain pour the mixture into a mug and then we pour it into ramekin molds now you can see these ramekin molds they have a line over here okay please pour only till this much because on top of that we are going to put a thin layer of strawberry uh, compote which we are making. Alright, so pour these into ramekin molds. And allow it to set in the fridge. So now to make our strawberry compost, take chopped strawberries and some sugar, okay, add the chopped strawberries to the bowl. And allow it to cook, do not add any water, the sugar and the strawberries will ooze out the water. You will have to allow it to cook for quite some amount of time. And keep on stirring in between so as not to let it burn on the base. Okay. So now as you can see, our dough has proved. We will knock it back. Please do not use any flour. It's a stiff dough. You do not need any flour. Knock it back. Roll it and divide it into 40 portions. Divide into half, 20 and 20 from this. For 20 from this, divide into further half, 10 and 10. For 10, half, 5 and 5, 1 fifth. Same way. Right? Same way we will do all the others. I keep them covered. them under the cloth, keep them covered, don't allow them to dry out. Then slowly elongate it, press it from the center and go towards the sides. Don't stretch it, press it, it will elongate. One basin will have two portions like this. Once you have both, same length, hold it like this and twist it. Once you have twisted it nicely, press it over here on the sides. Take a lightly, very lightly greased tray, perforated tray, and place it on the tray. Like this, we will complete all others. So we have divided into 40 portions which will get only 20 grisly sticks. As you can see, the grisly sticks have been baked and they have come out. They have been cooled down. Now we are going to place them in this glass and we are going to present them. You can present it into a short glass also if your grisly sticks are nice and short. You can put them into a short glass also. Alright. Arrange them nicely. And just to show you all how the hard dough and the milk powder gives a good snack, 
next to the snap that happens. Alright, so it gives a good snap, it has to be nice and little. Okay, so as you can see, our panna cotta is set nicely. We are going to garnish it. This is our strawberry compote which we have kept for cooking for a long period of time. Okay, so it has become nice and thick. We are going to add it onto our panna cotta. What we are going to do is, we are going to take panna cotta, compote, add a little bit of strawberry compote over it. Spread it. So spread it nicely. And I'm going to take one strawberry. And we have some chocolate garnishes which are made. Okay, on the strawberry you need to apply some amount of glaze. Please give it a shine and will prevent it from getting dry quickly. So glaze it up. And you need some chocolate garnishes. You can place a chocolate garnish for it to look pretty. This is one of the chocolate garnish that we made. The other one you can do is instead of putting the strawberry compote slice your strawberries nicely keep this attached apply the glaze it on and we have a curled garnish